Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Tuesday, April 5th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The spring game is in 11 days, the Notre Dame game in 151 days, the game against Michigan in 235 days. Ohio State just held its ninth practice of the spring on Monday and will be on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule this week in the countdown to next Saturday's spring game. There was also some big news that came out Monday afternoon and then again Monday night about the transfer portal and the football program. And then there's a top recruiting target set to announce his decision tomorrow, so it's going to be a very busy week around the program. My guest today is Kevin Noon. He is the host of the Big Me Kickoff podcast. Kevin, thanks for being here. Anytime. So uh, we had talked kind of mid-afternoon or so on Monday about what we might talk about on the show tonight, and then uh, news broke, and then news happened again, and then news happened again. It was like, all right, well, we're going to have an entirely different show than I thought we were going to have at about 3 o'clock this afternoon, but here we are. Uh, Let's start with the transfer portal. The Buckeyes lost a pair of defensive backs to the portal on Monday. First up, Legend Cavazos. He came to Ohio State as a corner. Then they were looking at him as maybe a nickel this spring. Now he's in the portal. You know, we have a policy about not speculating about possible transfers in advance of transfers. But this one was not really a total shock to me when it officially uh, when it officially came across the uh, came across the wires. No, not really. I mean, he was a consensus four star according to the twenty four seven composite rankings out of IMG Academy, originally out of San Antonio, Texas. I liked him better as a safety than a corner. He certainly wanted to play corner. Corner was a newer position for him, so I was a little worried just even at that point that he might get caught in the in between positions. What is he? Is he a corner? Is he a safety? You know, a couple of new uh, defensive back coaches with Perry Eliano and with Tim Walton. And, you know, apparently Legend saw the writing on the wall at that point and maybe, you know, was getting, you know, not not the number of reps that he'd been hoping to get or you know, a lot of things go into this. But, you know, he's off, you know, he's off into the portal now at this point and, you know, thought, OK, well, it, 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 these are going to start to trickle out. And little did we know between the two sports, it kind of went a little nuts. But, you know, wish the best for Legend at whatever the next stop is. Uh, had the opportunity to re- to cover his recruitment for a couple of years. Great kid. Uh, you know, I'll be interested to see if uh, the next stop, if he's a corner or a safety, to be quite honest, because I again, I still think he's a safety. Yeah, he is. He is a kid and a family. His dad, CJ, is, you know, that is a family and a kid who I think anyone around the Ohio State football program is going to say some pretty, pretty good things about. Uh, you know, he CJ Cavazos is a very, very friendly guy as well as dad. So, yeah, that uh, someone someone who I think people around the program feel, you know, w- would like to see t- uh, some good things happen for him in the future. The interesting question with Cavazos is what his departure and his move off of cornerback and to that nickel spot this spring maybe tells us about the other corners, the younger corners, because it seems to me like if they moved him, they're probably feeling pretty okay with at least one of and maybe both of their younger corners, J.K. Johnson and Jordan Hancock. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you didn't really get a chance to see either of them. Kalen Johnson kind of got slowed right at the beginning of things. Jordan Hancock didn't necessarily have the opportunity. I mean, you had this group of three young corners and Denzel Burks, the guy that emerges. No, we've heard plenty of good things about both of the young corners. So you have to kind of figure that that probably went into the factor. And, you know, when you get into that third year and if you're not really in the too deep, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, especially at a position where, sure, Ohio State went through some years where it was rolling a third corner. You know what they weren't rolling? A fifth corner. And if you're the fifth corner or the sixth corner, then you kind of run into trouble. And when Ohio State moves to a 4-2-5, that's not three corners out there. That's three safeties. So yeah, it, I, I think I think it speaks volumes as to how they feel about the rest of their depth. I mean, people are going to sit there and immediately be like, well, what does this mean for depth? I think it's a good sign in terms of what it is that you have. And it just means that you have to continue recruiting, you know, recruiting the position. But you know, let's not forget, Ohio State went into the day at 90 scholarship players once the summer enrollees get here, now that, you know, we haven't gotten to the second one, but they're at 88. Mm-hmm. So they're not done yet. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to have at least three more of these discussions between now and summer. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think you can kind of, we don't do this on the show, but if you want to do a sit at home and kind of figure out the profile of the kind of guy who ends up transferring after the spring, when you kind of have the, what we call the spring awakening, where you've been there two years, three years, something like that, and you're not cracking that too deep or you're not getting close to, you know, in that starting rotation. Those are the guys who typically are at least thinking about it. The interesting thing is that the next guy on the, the, uh, who transferred on Monday night is Bryson Shaw. And 
you know, he was someone who saw tons of playing time last year. He was third on the defense in snaps last year behind only Denzel Burke and Ronnie Hickman. But then when Jim Knowles came in, he sort of shuffled some things around and it didn't sound like Bryson Shaw was necessarily going to be a starter this year. And now he he is in, in, off to the uh, off to the portal as well. Yeah, I mean, it's not a new thing. We saw Brendan White go out and have a, a defensive MVP type of performance. What was it in the Big Ten Championship game in the next year? He, Rose Bowl. Or in yeah. the Rose, and, and then he was gone. I mean, mm-hmm. so, I mean, things like that do happen. It's a little bit more rare that somebody who has logged as many games and as many snaps as Bryson Shaw, but that's the situation. We talk about the one side of things. Okay, well, you, these new coaches are coming in. That means opportunity for all these young guys. Well, that also means that older guys, you know, if, if they're not able to seize their spot, I mean, yeah, what does that mean? I mean, so, you know, in some ways I am a little surprised. In some ways I'm not surprised in terms of kind of how the way things were shuffling. Uh, you know, I think that Bryson Shaw took a lot of of garbage from fans on social media and things on that nation or that, that nature. So, um, you know, I, I think it'll be good for him to get a fresh start. I really do. Um, it'll be interesting to see where he lands as well, but, uh, it, it's real, you know, the Jim Knowles head coach of the defense going to come in and making changes. Well, two changes have been made at this point and whether or not it, it was a, you should explore other opportunities or it was, you should explore other opportunities. You know, we may never know exactly how that goes down, but uh, here we are. Yeah, and he's someone who, he was at that deep safety spot, what Knowles now calls the adjuster safety spot, and kind of going into the spring, I think we were sort of assuming that's probably Josh Proctor's job to lose once Proctor was back on the field and healthy, and he is kind of gradually doing more and more drills as you go through the spring, coming back off of that broken ankle. But now it sounds like maybe that's Ronnie Hickman's job. And so it'll be interesting to see how the rest of that defensive backfield shakes out and where Proctor maybe slots in. Does he move to the boundary safety spot? Does he stay in that adjuster spot? And does, you know, does Hickman move back to boundary? I mean, there's there's a million possible permutations here, but it just it sounds like the position that, that Bryson Shaw had after after Josh, he won that starting job after Josh Proctor went down. Well, now Proctor's back. Now maybe Hickman's in that spot as well. So it's just. All of a sudden, you go from one on the depth chart to you know potentially three, you know, and that that uh, changes changes your outlook a little bit. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. He is a Maryland native, so don't be shocked if he ends up back. You know, does the Keandre Jones route and uh, goes back to uh, play for his home state Terps? That's a possibility, but uh, we'll see how that we'll see how that all shakes out. So that is two defensive backs who are headed out, and then there could be another one coming in later this week. That is safety prospect Malik Hartford. He is set to announce his decision on Wednesday. He's a 2023 recruit, so he's not going to just magically appear uh, on the practice field this week. But, you know, he could uh, commit to the Buckeyes. And it sounds like, I mean, he, he's someone who's an in-state prospect, who uh, Perry Aliano was very familiar with before he came over to Ohio State. And it sounds like the Buckeyes may be the team to beat when he announces on Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, he has a list of, I don't know, seven schools. I mean, in a lot of ways, I feel it's one school. I mean, certainly teams have, have taken taken their swings there. I mean, he does have kind of a who's who of the Midwest in terms of the schools that have made his list. But, uh, you know, I think when Ohio State really puts it, puts it down and says, we want to get an in-state kid, you know, sometimes you run into issues with some of the kids out of the GCL and St. Ignatius with Notre Dame's involved. But, uh They've done such good work with Malik Hartford at this point, 6'3", I think 170, 175, just a big, long safety. Um, you know, there's some debate. I think there's some people who think he's underranked in terms of uh, state of Ohio rankings at this point and put him r- right up there against like Luke Montgomery and Brennan Vernon as the best within the state of Ohio. Certainly fills a need. I think it's a real important get. And truthfully, I think it's really important for, for Malik Hartford to come out and, and, and lock down his spot because... Ohio State welcomed in a slew of of talented players from from the state of Florida with the South Florida Express tour who were on campus this past weekend, and there were some safeties there. So if you want to get your spot, you better get your spot because they've already got Cedric Hawkins, and then Malik Hartford gets his spot because the thing is you don't want to sit there and be like, well, I know where I want to go, but I just want to drag this out. Well, you look, we look, and if you sit there and you just start spend too much time wanting to go to campuses and eat pizza and and hang out with the guys or whatever, you run the risk of not ending up where you want to go. So, you know, grab that brass ring when it's in front of you. Yeah, and you mentioned mentioned his ranking. He is 150th nationally in the 247 composite, number four in the state of Ohio. Uh, 247's own proprietary rankings. 
They, they've got him 90th in the country and second in the state. So yeah, he is, uh, if he's underrated, then he is pretty darn good. He, that's, uh, that is, uh, definitely, you know, definitely not an out in-state reach. I think that's one of those that uh, people look at and go, mm, yeah, okay, that's, that's a guy that you should be taking at this kind of cycle. Yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, Perry Aliana, when he was down at Cincinnati, had a very good relationship with Malik Hartford. That was something that, uh, when they brought Perry Eliano in, yeah, you may remember I had Mick Walker on, our old buddy Mick Walker, to talk about Eliano because he's covering Cincinnati now. And he, you know, he said he had a great relationship with, with uh, Malik Hartford. And, uh, you know, that was that was one that he thought was probably going to end up as an Ohio State commitment. So we will find out for sure on Wednesday. But uh, that's uh, that, that's where that is for now. We mentioned off earlier there were three guys in the portal. We're the, we talked about Legend Cavazos. We talked about Bryson Shaw. The third guy is on the basketball front. Uh, on Monday night, John Rothstein reported that Justin Ahrens told him that he planned to transfer. Now, Ahrens started 19 games this year, but then you look through the game log for his season and the minutes just kind of go off a cliff toward the end of the year. Like starting in the kind of second week of February, all of a sudden, a lot of 20 and 30 minute games turn into a lot of 10 and 12 minute games. He played 12 minutes against, uh, against Loyola in the NCAA tournament, only four against Villanova. And, you know, you... <laughs> You made this point on the board, like I mean, this is—I—I I would call this like you know the next Ohio State team is like a Chris Holtman's version of the ship of Theseus, where it's just what you had before, you know, what what you left port with and what you came back with. You know, it is—it is almost a philosophical discussion: is this the same basketball team as last year or not? Yeah, they all have the same name on the front of their jerseys, but nobody's going to have the same name on the back of their jerseys <laughs> when you sit there and you're like, "All right, Zed Key's going to be back." Kalen Etzler, who redshirted, is going to be back. Um, Michi Johnson's going to be back, even though people are bound and determined to put that poor kid in the portal. So, you know, <laughs> well, I, guess we'll, I guess we'll see. And then beyond that, I mean, it's going to be a completely different roster, more or less. So, um, yeah, Justin Arns, when you, when you talk about a guy that's a distance shooter, so much of it is confidence. He just never really had confidence this year. He had a couple of games where he went off and looked like a Justin Arns of old. But there were just a lot of games where he didn't have the confidence. And and it was not even a case of that he was just putting them up and not making them. There were times that he was just passing shots that he would normally take. So once you kind of lose that confidence, I mean, it, it's difficult to get out there and play you. And Justin Arns, he, he, each year he got a little bit better at defense, but I would never put him on the All-Big Ten defensive team in terms of what his defensive quotient was for the team i mean he was somebody that was just going to get out there and get your points get your threes and get your threes he only made like four or, or attempted or made four twos over the course of his career we know what he was john diebler made a ton of threes but he also made some twos that wasn't in justin Arnes's game so justin walked with the with the team he walked for senior day so we kind of figured that he might be on his way out he has a degree in hand the question was going to be, would he transfer somewhere to go do a graduate year? Would he just, you know, get on to the next chapter? Would he try to play overseas? Well, as it stands now, he's going to go look for a new home to go play another year of college basketball. And I think that's good for him. I think he needs to get out there and find a shot and fix whatever mechanically is not working for him. Because, I mean, he was a significantly better player than what we saw this year. And it just, you know, it's difficult to see somebody who normally was producing at a, at a much higher level struggle the way he did and certainly didn't help Ohio State's fortunes. Uh, and they had to start him in a lot of games just because they dealt with so many injuries over the course of the year. It was a matter of having bodies to start. I mean, you know, it was kind of like it was Justin or, or who? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Usa Jalo wasn't walking through that door. Yeah, and he, uh, Aaron says, has just one of those random one-game careers where his freshman year there was a game against Iowa, 29 points, Six of ten from three, nine of nine from the line, and that was uh, February twenty sixth, two thousand nineteen. Twenty nine points, and that was the only twenty point game in his career. That was it for uh, for his time at Ohio State. He had that. He had his one shining moment, and you know was a contributor for several years, but never got back to that level. I think there was an maybe an ex unfair expectation created by that one game, and you know never quite got back to that level again. But uh, yeah, if you you know for. A four-year contributor for uh, you know a couple NCAA tournament teams and uh, got your degree. That is uh, that is not so bad. So we'll see we'll see where Justin Harrens ends up after that. So uh, you will see where we end up tomorrow when we do a whole other one of these shows. But uh, that'll do it for today. Uh, we will. Uh, you can make sure you check out uh, BuckeyeScoop.com. Kevin has been writing a uh, series of stories. He mentioned the South Florida Express guys. I think at one point uh, he has written a series of stories on a number of those guys, some very, very big names, really, really elite players who are visiting Columbus this weekend. 
kind of catching up with all of those guys. Uh, our, we, may, we may have our buddy Bill Green on to talk about that a little later on this week. He uh, he is very, very tied in with the South Florida Express program, which is one of the very, very best South, uh, seven-on-seven programs in the entire country and uh, loaded with talent. So uh, look for look for that probably sometime later on this week. But uh, for now, that'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.